Welcome back to the programme. But first to our news in brief. Ahead of Kogi State governorship elections slated for November 16, the two major political parties in the state, the All Progressive Party, uh, Congress Party and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have inaugurated their campaign committees that will canvass for votes before the election. While the PDP, during the inauguration in Lokoja, the state capital, promised issue-based campaign that will be free of rancor and hate speeches, the APC, on their part, appealed to their members to eschew violence and come out to vote like they've never done before. Elsewhere, the People's Democratic Party is alleging that the APC-led federal government is planning to gag the media. The PDP in a statement says some recent actions of the federal government are pointers that the government of the day is bent on preventing the media from performing its constitutional guaranteed freedom of expression. Part of the statement reads, the decision by President Buhari to impose stringent regulations on online media and broadcast organizations is recently announced by the Minister of Information and Culture, al Lai Mohammed is completely obnoxious, anti-democratic, and a direct violation of statutory rules governing media practice and freedom of expression in Nigeria. PDP alleges that the case in point is a recent presidential de declaration of political comments as Class A offense. The party insists that such a move is designed to undermine the nation's constitutional democracy, exterminate the rights of citizens to dissenting public opinion, and impose a dictatorship and one-party system on the nation. Party rejects the move by President Muhammad Buhari and all Progressive Congress federal government to further gag the media, subjugate Nigerians, and curtail our constitutionally guaranteed freedom of expression. Our party holds that the decision by President Buhari to impose stringent regulations on online media and broadcast organizations as presently announced by the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, is completely obnoxious, anti-democratic, and a direct violation of statutory rules governing media practice and freedom of expression in Nigeria. The PDP also rejects the presidential declaration of political comments as Class A offense, insisting that such is designed to undermine the nation's constitutional democracy, exterminate the rights of citizens to dissenting public opinion, emasculate the opposition, and foist a dictatorship and one-party system on a very dear nation. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress, APC, says the country is gradually becoming a one-party state due to the absence of a vibrant opposition. The ruling party in a statement reads, there's no point pretending that the present crop of opposition parties in the country can fill the role expected of opposition in any civilized democracy. Part of the statement reads, the so-called coalition of United Political Party, CUPP, which could have filled the vacuum and engaged the APC administration, in useful debate over governance has become a comedy theatre group and frontline PDP minion. CUPP has the unenviable mandate to try to intimidate and blackmail important state institutions such as INEC, the Judiciary and Security Agencies on behalf of PDP with the hope of gaining political advantage, having been rejected by the majority of the voters. Well, according to the APC, the nation's democracy stands again a lot in an atmosphere of robust engagement by responsible and patriotic opposition as envisaged by the country's founding fathers. So let's now look at the signs, the body language and the stance of the President Buhari with regards to press freedom under the current dispensation. Uh, we have joining us from our Abuja studios, Mr. Richard Menga, a member of the All Progressives Congress. I'd like to thank you for joining us. And via Skype, he joins us from the UK, Mr. Ken Okolubo, a PDP member. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for your time. Um, I think I'll take this question to you um, in, the, uh, in our studios in Abuja. What do you make of the accusations coming from the PDP that the APC-led federal government is trying to amend the constitution to take away the rights of citizens, undermine our democratic institutions, gag the media. Well, thank you very much 
for inviting me to this program. What I have to say is this. It's quite true freedom of expression is basic in the democracy. But when it is abused, when it is taken for granted, it has to be regulated. You see, there's, there has been a lot of mischief, a lot of lies on the social media and in the press. People come out with a lot of lies. They misinform a lot of Nigerians. So I see nothing wrong if the president decides that these things should be regulated. I will take you back to what went on just some few days ago. There was a lot of rumor that the president was going to get married last week Friday. It was well publicized. It was well publicized. It was on the social media, um, on, on Twitter, on many online media uh, agencies. And uh, those who were credited to have brought this out were some major chieftains of the People's Democratic Party. That was a lie. It made a lot of news. It was everywhere on the social media. But it was a lie. As find out I from Mr. Okolubo, so you, you've made an allegation quite strong uh, following what just happened. Mr. Okolubo, um, do you have any knowledge of that, the, the purported uh, alleged marriage of the president and someone else um, was initiated by Chief Chains, members of the PDP? I think that's very responsible to say that uh, members of the opposition party, specifically PDP, were behind the rumor the uh, purported marriage of the president. We all read it on the social media. And uh, it's, it was, I, I found it very laughable here in the UK because nobody actually gave credence to the stories. Uh, as a Muslim, the president was is entitled to marry more than one wife. But it was obvious that everything that they were putting up together were being done by the fifth columnist, which they should search in the APC. Certainly, the APC is already uh, fighting against itself. It is very obvious that the 2023 ambition of some of them in the APC has beclouded their sense of uh, reasoning in terms of allowing the president to do his work. So he shouldn't uh, lay the blame on the PDP. Looking at the press, we have always seen the press as the only alternative we have to expose the ills of any government. And so when you make certain, uh, 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 certain conditions which is geared towards carrying the press, it's seen as if you want to emasculate the press. Mr. Kolobo, just, just because we're, we're wrapping up, I want to quickly get uh, your final thoughts on the fact that the presidency has talked about um, moving from 500,000 to 5 million for breaches relating to hate speech. Some people have argued that this is to uphold the truth, to prevent misinformation. Isn't that part of the democratic process? Briefly, please. Nobody wants nobody wants to promote hate speech. But when you move the the, the fee from five hundred thousand to five million, it becomes a bit suspicious because you need legislation. I don't think you can unilaterally just do all this by without the acts of the National Assembly. I need to be corrected on that because what we are saying here is hate speeches must be condemned, but do not do things that will make people scared of expressing themselves and saying the truth. That's exactly what we're trying okay. to Let, Let's quickly get Mr. Menger on this. Is the government, the APC-led federal government, afraid of dissenting voices? Quickly. No. The APC government is not afraid of anything. To the best of my understanding, what that thing entails is that there should be moderation. It's quite true freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is in the constitutional democracy. But what that thing is trying to say, all these lies people come out to say, to misinform gullible Nigerians, tell, lies, tell a lot of lies that this is going to happen, this is going to happen. That is aimed at regulating all, all these things. All right. I can tell you, uh, uh, it's not good. I don't believe in apportioning blends to PDP or APC because APC was brought to power to correct the perceived ease that were brought in by the PDP. I remember and I, I, I wish, I wish we had more July time. Um, I, I really must thank you, uh, two gentlemen, uh, be a very short discussion. Mr. Richard Manga, a member of the APC, and Mr. Ken Okolubo, a PDP member, joining us via the UK. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. That's how we wrap things up this afternoon. Thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.